What's up everyone, Cole Kepper in here. Thanks for stopping by for another video. Today we are going to do something that many, many, many of you have been asking about for a long, long time. Today I'm gonna bring you guys along on my journey mixing a song from start to finish. You're gonna see literally everything. Now, a couple disclaimers before we get into this. It's gonna be nasty. It's gonna be dirty. I'm after a very particular vibe for this song and some of you might not agree with my choices and that's okay. And my hope, my thought process is that just watching someone work through a mix from start to finish hopefully will give you some insight into things that you can incorporate into your own mix. So this is a little piece of music that I created that's going to be for my intro here on YouTube. And I also needed to create a piece of music for videos just like this because uh, I can't really use actual client's music because it'll get a copyright strike and it'll get demonetized even if I have permission from the label or from the artist. So unfortunately this is an instrumental piece of music uh, there's no vocal in this but you're gonna get a lot out of this still I think now I'm not really gonna do a whole bunch of narration while I'm mixing because I'm gonna try to fall into the zone and mix like I would normally mix a song I'm gonna do my best to at least tell you guys when I'm switching monitors because you're not gonna be able to tell that and whenever I insert a piece of hardware I'll show that on camera in some b-roll as well as always there'll be links in the description for every single piece of gear and plug-in that I use that I can provide a link to you on. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment to let me know. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. And if you decide to subscribe, hit the bell next to the subscribe tab so you get notified when I drop sweet new videos. Let's get to mixing. Okay, so a couple other things I want to point out here before we actually get started. If you see all these tracks have an output of bus 23 and 24, it's because I actually have a fake master over here. This is just an aux input, so that way I can have my hardware send, which is this line 7 and 8, and that hardware send goes to my external recorder, so that way you guys actually get to hear every move that I make. Normally this would not be the case, and I would just have all of these going to a regular master. I don't normally do an all music uh, bus, so to speak, so don't pay any attention to that. That's just for the recording purposes here. So the other thing I want to point out real quick is that I actually have a parallel drum bus set up here. These two tracks right here are both auxes with both the exact same input, bus one and two, and the same output, and I have my snare and my toms and my overheads run through this parallel drum bus so one of these is going to get compression and the other one is not now in this particular instance I'm not running my kick drums or my room uh, sounds through my drum buses because this is like electronic more electronic 808 sounding kick drums and uh, I don't want to actually add any bus compression to those 808s if it was a normal drum kit normal organic sounding drum kit even if it was programmed I would have run all of my drum shells through the drum bus okay here's what this sounds faders up no effects no compression no EQ As with my top-down mixing video, I'm going to do the, the mix bus first. <clears throat> Here I'm going to throw in my external chain, which is a pair of Cappy hiders and a Serpent SB4001. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to get somewhere. So I haven't touched any of the individual tracks yet. Now we're going to, by the way, uh, that was on my event Opals. Now I'm gonna to switch to my NS10s. 
set the drum bus up. Now we're gonna put a drum bus compressor in, which is my tube tech. And we're gonna put it on the first parallel drum bus. I need to pull my send down, go into my external recorder here because I'm starting to clip it a little bit. Let's see. Um, let's do some saturation on the other drum bus. Alright, so same as in my top down mixing video, I have done my mix bus first, then my drum buses. If there are more buses in the song, I would continue on down the line and do all the other buses before moving on to individual tracks. So let's work on these toms here. Okay, those are sounding pretty good. Let's move on to our kick drum here. So I'm just looking to get more attack out of this kick drum. I want more impact and more attack. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the oratones now. All right, while we're on the oratones, we're gonna start on the snare drum.
distort the crap out of this stuff. I want more energy, just more energy everywhere. So on the kick drum, Digging that. So we're getting closer to the vibe that I'm going after here. Really, really aggressive and really dirty and fuzzy and nasty sounding. Okay, so I wanted more uh, mid-range out of these cymbals. However, I don't think the toms sound nearly as good uh, with more mid-range in the cymbals. So we're gonna start working on the upper mids here. Okay, so we're cutting like some 4K in the cymbals, and that kind of accomplished the same thing that I wanted to accomplish with the cymbals uh, without messing the toms up. Uh, let's work on this room sound here. That is very quiet. We're going to pump that up. I'm compressing the snot out of this room uh, channel, not necessarily because I want the sound of compression, but I want the cymbals and the toms to be closer in volume to each other in the room track. In, the in this room track originally, uh, the cymbals were way, 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 way quieter uh, than the toms, which is not common, by the way. Uh, but anyway, so that's what I did to try to even those out. Okay, let's get some room verb going here. I already got a bus set up. <clears throat> let's go with some Valhalla room. And let's just see what this sounds like. We're gonna go on the snare only for right now. Okay, we need a much darker sound than that and less pre-delay.
Okay, I like the sound of this reverb. Now, one of the easiest things for uh, newer mix engineers to do is to use too much reverb. So one of my tricks is now that I have the sound that I want, I'm going to pull the fader all the way down, and I'm going to just start pushing it up until I can just barely start to hear it. Okay, so then I will mute it and see how much I lose when I mute it. All right, we're gonna go a little more. Okay, finally got our drum sound pretty much put together. Let's get on to some of these bass sounds here. Okay, so I want this to be ultra distorted and I want it to be I want to put some delay on this. So let's just see what this sounds like. Loving that. Now let's try some delay. We're gonna go Valhalla delay here. And we want super wide. And we want one and two. So we want a quarter note delay, I think. And let's run that here, and then we're going to pull this down because we want it a darker sounding delay. And we don't want much low end in it. And we get rid of the wow and flutter. Let's see what this sounds like. So on its own. I always forget. I'm filming. Sometimes I forget that I'm filming. Here we go. <laughs> okay, let's hear that in context. All right, what's this other synth sound like? Let me get so that way we're not listening to this intro as long here. Oh, okay, so this is just like a sine wave. So this is the thick part of the bass. Okay, so we're gonna kind of deal with that a little bit later because like my magic is in the mid-range mix tutorial video, I'm not really concerned about that ultra low end just yet. Okay, let's blend that lead synth in later after we, uh, let's see, let's actually get rid of these tracks because there's nothing on them, right? All right, sorry about that. My memory card on my camera ran out. So, where are we? Okay, we're moving on to guitars here. <clears throat> so, here are the guitars right here. Those sound pretty good by themselves, but I've got another pair here that I think I want to do something a little funky with. Let's try to octave these down uh, and get it just nice and just thick sounding. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Let's use this plug in and let's see what this sounds like. Let's pull it down an octave. That sounds really cool to me. Let's copy that over to the other guitar. So now we've got a pair. Okay. 
Okay, that's that's bad ass. Okay, so now we're gonna blend these with the regular guitars here. Okay, been on NS10s this whole time. We're gonna switch back to the Oratones and blend these. Pull this synth down a little bit here. All right, let's get some uh, EQ going on these. We're gonna go back to the NS10s. It's this point in the mix that I always start getting really excited. Things are starting to gel, it's starting to come together, starting to have lots of impact and lots of energy. Mmm, this is, this is fun. <laughs> Let's get some saturation over there. All right, now we need some reverb. We ain't got any reverb on anything yet, so let's get some reverb going on some stuff. Let's see. Uh, let's do Valhalla Vintage Verb. Let's go for the 80s vibe and Let's leave it on concert hall for now. We'll see how this sounds. And pull the high cut down a little bit. I just want a little bit of size, just a little bit of extra size, not much. We got this little lead guitar thing right at the end coming in here, right here. So we need to blend that and EQ that. Now we want lots of reverb on that because I want it to be big and ambient sounding. Reverb down. All right, so at this point in a normal mix, when I'm mixing a normal song with vocals and verses and choruses and whatnot, this would be about the point I start automation. So then I would start writing volume automation to help the song shrink and grow. The small parts become even smaller and the big parts become even bigger. But this is just a tiny little piece of music, so we're not gonna do that. So instead we're gonna jump right ahead to the very next thing, which I like to put some saturation on my mix bus. Um, and I usually will bounce back and forth between different plugins, but this time we're gonna use this one 
and we're just gonna creep it up and see where we like it. Let's see, we need to start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna move back to the big monitors, the event opals, and listen to it in the full spectrum. So to me, we're still lacking some mid-range here, so we're gonna pump up some 1.2. Uh, we're gonna pull some mid-range back out of the guitars now, just a little bit. We need to get some toms going to this drum reverb here. Let's see, bus three and four. Okay, so the next thing that I will commonly do is put a limiter on it, smash the crap out of it, just to see what it's gonna feel like when it gets mastered. Pull this down, I don't want you to clip. I think you might, might have been clipping right there. Okay, so at this point we need to focus on some low end. Uh, the low end of that kick drum is still, it's a little, it's a little much. So we're gonna pull that back down um, and push the frequency up just a little bit here. We're gonna pull it all the way back down. Let's turn our limiter back off. All right, now let's work on our, oh, we still got this lead synth here. Okay, so I want this to not interfere with the guitars. All right, now I'm feeling like I have a little too much reverb on the drums. Moving back to the NS10s. push these octave guitars up a little bit.
Okay, so now I'm gonna just be switching back and forth between all the monitors. Make sure it sounds good on all my monitors. So let's go to the Oratones first. NS10s. Event Opals. Okay, I'm not completely sold on the top end of this kick drum on the Event Opals. So the point here, and I've talked about this in other mixing videos, is I'm switching back and forth between these monitors, and when there are no more changes to be made between them all, then I know I'm in a good spot. I think we're good. All right, let's put the limiter back in here. We're gonna pull the output down so we're more closely level matched. All right, guys, I think that pretty much does it. Uh, this is where I would send this off to a client if I was mixing for a client. This is where I might do a car check if I was going to do a car check. I don't really do those much anymore. Uh, this is also where maybe I go get lunch and then I come back and listen with some fresh ears again. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to y'all. Don't forget there'll be links in the description for everything that I talked about and used or as much of it as I can put in the description. Uh, so that way you can at least go check out everything that I used here in this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe tab. Give me a thumbs up and uh, I guess that's about it. Share with your friends if you got something out of it. I appreciate you guys sticking around all the way to the end. It means a lot to me. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.